Turn it on and turn it off again. One, two, one, two, one, two. Good evening to the public at home. If you're tuning in, this is Mark's channel. Welcome. This evening we celebrate the victorious ascension of Jesus and we look forward to the sermon from Josephine Mills. Testing, testing. That's good. I'll just go and see if that's come through. I think that's good. Just checking the volume. One, two. That we're good. Good evening, Sarah Paulette Jackson, who's signed in on the live chat. Uh, great to have you here with us. Chris Idol. Good evening, Chris. How is uh, Blockwell Park uh, looking out over the rain? Rita. Good evening. Uh, Rita says, good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Nora Tuck. Hello, friends. Uh, so special greetings to the friends of Nora. Uh, welcome to those of you in church. Lovely to have you here. It's uh, raining outside, but we are being showered with God's blessings and God's goodness. Um, we'll begin in just a moment or two. I'm just checking all the technology. Uh, stand by and we'll begin in 
two minutes. Okay, uh, let's uh, come together to worship God together this evening. I'm going to begin by reading a psalm. I'm going to read Psalm 68. It's quite a long psalm, but uh, we'll get the gist of uh, the prayer uh, as we come to God this evening. Psalm 68. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. As smoke is blown away by the wind, may you blow them away. As wax melts before the fire, May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord. And rejoice, rejoice before him. He is a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. And God sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you went out before your people, O God, when you marched through the wasteland, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it. And from your bounty, O God, you provided for the poor. The Lord announced the word, and great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings and armies flee in haste, in the camps men divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the campfires, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow fallen on Zalmon. The mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains, rugged are the mountains of Bashan. Why gaze in envy, O rugged mountains, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? The chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended on high, you led captives in your train. You received gifts from men, even from the rebellious, that you, O Lord God, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to God, our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Surely God will crush the heads of his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. The Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan. I will bring them from the depths of the sea, that you may plunge your feet in the blood of your foes, while the tongues of your dogs have their share. Your procession has come into view, O God, the procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. In front are the singers. After them, the musicians. With them are the maidens playing tambourines. Praise God in the great congregation. Praise the Lord in the assembly of Israel. There is the little tribe of Benjamin leading them. There the great throng of Judah's princes. There the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Summon your power, O God. Show us your strength, O God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Humbled, may it bring bars of silver. Scatter the nations who delight in war. 
Envoys will come from Egypt. Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the picture in this psalm of your majesty, your procession of victory, your triumphing over those who've set themselves against you, your victory over the enemies of God and God's people. We want to join in with that sense of, of adoration, of wonder, of praise, of sharing that sense of victory, that sense of the conquest of evil. We want to join in with that sentiment of praise be to God, praise be to the Lord, to, to God our Saviour, who daily bears our burdens. You are awesome, O God. Lord, we thank you that you daily carry our burdens. You daily understand the things which each one of us goes through, the highs and lows, the joys and disappointments. And we just thank you that you are above all, over all. We pray that in this time together now, we might focus again on your greatness, your goodness, your power, your victory, your majesty. Stir us with the words of the songs that we will hear. Stir us, we pray, from the scripture and encourage us together, those of us in church and those joining through the live stream. Unite us in simply coming closer to you, closer into line with your will, more deeply understanding your purposes and your plans and just enjoying spending time in our Father's presence. Be glorified now in our midst, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, have a couple of songs. Uh, Alistair and Emma and Lonnie are going to sing uh, a couple of songs uh, and then we shall have the Bible. As you know, I'm not yet able to invite you to join in, uh, but you're welcome to stand, to sit, um, and to be joining in, singing in your hearts.
God, thank you very much, uh, Alistair and Emma and Lolly, uh, for singing on our behalf, really, uh, just affirming our belief and confidence in God Almighty and in what He's done through Jesus and through the promise of His Holy Spirit. Uh, Thursday was Ascension Day, 
and we're going to read uh, an Ascension reading. I'm going to read the Bible passage, and then that'll be followed by our sermon from Josephine. Josephine, really glad uh, that you are a preacher tonight. Thank you for preparing. Uh, I think you probably all know Josephine. Uh, she's a regular member of our preaching team, and uh, we're delighted that she's going to share this evening. Before she speaks, let's read Luke 24, uh, verse 44, to the end of the, to the, end of the book, in fact. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them, and he was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Good evening, everyone. Um, I say good evening, everyone, as if there are that many people <laughs> physically in the building. <laughs> if you're at home, you're very wise because it's incredibly wet outside. Um, I, I absolutely love whenever Steve introduces me and thanks me for preparing. And I, I often think whenever he says that, you have no idea if I've prepared or not. I could just be winging it. <laughs> I, I'm not winging it. I have at least read the passage. Um, <laughs> and some. Um, <laughs> anyway, you guys at home, you're missing some great banter in person, but next time when the weather is less bad. Um, before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for Ascension Sunday. Thank you for Pentecost that will be coming soon. Um, thank you so much, Jesus, that we can live in a post-resurrection world and uh, read about your word, read about your life, and read about the promises that your death and resurrection hold for us. Um, I pray that everything I say will be of you, and anything that isn't of you will fall to the ground. Um, bless our time right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Ascension, it's not really Ascension Sunday, but I'm going to call it Ascension Sunday, because we're talking about Ascension today. Um, thank you, Steve, for reading the passage um, in Luke. Um, before I start, with the, the, my reflection on this passage, I wanted to do a quick sidebar on the book of Luke. Um, so I did some research and I learned that Luke's gospel was written in pretty much a, a bio, biographical way that uh, most of you will know that Luke is a doctor. Um, he set out to write this gospel in quite a historical um, way and he intended it very much to be an account of Jesus's life birth, life, death, resurrection, ascension. Uh, it's one of the few gospels where the ascension is actually discussed um, and described in, in any meaningful way. Um, I also read that Luke's focus in his book was very much um, on the fact that salvation is available to Jews and Gentiles, which is great news um, for me and for, for many of us. Um, and in Luke's own words, he, the purpose of his account, Luke's gospel, uh, is the following, Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, so as in Luke is saying like, oh, not just the gospels we've, we've heard, we've seen before Matthew, Mark, um, uh, it seems also good to me also, having followed all the things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most certainly, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. So it was basically written so that the early church, not so, yeah, so that the early church followers, us, um, will have certainty uh, about the things that we have been taught in the Gospels. So my reflections on Luke. Um, 
Every good story, we are told, I was told in school, has three parts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. The gospel, being the good story, similarly has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And before today, I hadn't really reflected much um, about ascension, if I'm completely honest. Uh, I knew that Christ rose into heaven after he had appeared to many people across about 40 days. Uh, for me, the gospel had reached its climactic end at the end of the resurrection. At the resurrection, uh, And so for me, that's where my focus uh, often is. It's just Jesus has died. He's risen again for uh, forgiveness of my sins. Great. Like, that, that's me done. Um I never really thought much about Jesus being hidden behind a cloud uh, because that also was quite odd. Even as a child, I was like, oh, that's a bit weird that there's a person in a cloud. And also whenever I took an airplane, I just never saw this person in a cloud. So I was a bit like, oh, I don't know what that story has has for me. Um, but uh, I think I have completely missed the point when I reread this and um, kind of was reflecting on this again. Um, Yes, the gospel is a great story in three parts, uh, but I realized that I might have gotten the division and allocation of the plot to the parts uh, wrong. Where I initially initially thought the beginning was, uh, was that we have fallen, the middle was Christ has come to die, the end was Christ has risen to give us life everlasting, as I described just now. But I actually think a more appropriate cut would be the following. So part one, beginning. Christ came to live and die as a man for the atonement of our sins. Um, part two, Christ was resurrected as a man to reconcile us to the Father, and he ascended into heaven as a man, bodily, where he remains interceding for us. And part three is that Christ will come again as a man, because that is him now. He's bodily being uh, in a resurrection body to receive us into his kingdom. This means that we are only in the middle part of the story, according to my recut. It's up for discussion. We can discuss it uh, over a pint from next week inside if it's uh, still rainy outside. Um, but according to my new cut, uh, we are in the middle part with a grand finale third part hurtling its way through space and time towards us um, or us towards it. If you have seen the film Tenet, you know what I mean. If you haven't seen it, I urge you to watch it. We can also talk about it over a pint uh, next week. <laughs> All very legal um, and above board. So here is why it is important that we see us now as being in the middle act rather than being in the kind of closing of the story. Three reasons. One is the story is very much not over. We are in the midst of unraveling this plot. So we're in act two, right? We still have this great final act to come. Uh, when a story isn't over, the outcome hasn't been decided. Uh, you see this in every arena where battles are played out. So in sports, uh, particularly, you always get told if you play sports, you know, don't give up if the ball is still in play. Um, every single lap, every pit stop, if you're a Formula One fan, every rebound, uh, if you're basketball fan, every piece moved on the chessboard, um, every next ball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They all count. Um, and that applies to the gospel story as well. We know we have victory in Christ, but how the end game plays out and what the score ends up on the board as is anyone's guess. What I mean by that and what this means in practice is that what we do on earth with our lives actually count. We're still in the middle act. We're still playing this out. There is still an end game to, played out, to be played out. There is still time for us to share our salvation stories and the love of God with all the people who don't know the joy of Christ yet. Uh, that decision you've been weighing up about whether to do something God-honoring or ungodly, that, that decision matters. The prayers you've been saying for those people the, um, whom you love uh, to meet with God or or to receive healing, or to know his goodness, they, they all matter. Those prayers matter. We still have everything to play for, is what I'm trying to say, given that we are in the midst of this story. Uh, what God's work has done through Christ might be finished, as in the work of Christ is finished on earth, but it's not over for us. Um, and we can have faith 
in the fact that it's not over and that we do still have everything to play for. Um, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And we haven't seen Jesus in the sky, um, but we know that he is alive and he has gone ahead of us into heaven. And we can have faith um, that 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 is where you know, we will end up in future. Um, but as we head there, the score on the board is not, it's not written yet. So um, that's the first reason why I think it's important. The second reason is um, that while the earthly work of Christ is done, like properly and truly done, Christ died, was resurrected, and, and it's finished. Um, but whilst that is fully done, uh, well, not but, so it is fully done, and Christ has fully done that, and he's gone home. So a bit like, you know, if you were uh, being deployed in in any sort of thing, like in the military, or uh, if, if you had a, a role, like a mission you were supposed to go on, once you're done, you you go home. Uh, if you're still doing it, you're, you're not done. And Christ has gone home, he's done. Um, so Christ going into heaven as a person, for me, is a very visual sort of uh, seal of how complete his work on earth is. It's it's finished. He appeared to loads of people over a month, and then he, in front of them, blessed them, went to heaven. He's like, my work on earth is done. Um, he appeared to many groups of people, those who had known him, those who had persecuted him, those who had kind of heard heard about him and then also to those who happen to be women and I'm not trying to be anti-feminist or anything I, I am a woman um but I wanted to point out the group of women as, as a special group because um traditionally women and their accounts have not been seen as the most significant and meaningful and Christ spent his kind of remaining days on earth speaking appearing to the women which I think is 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 very special um I think it's very relevant because the last words that someone says before leaving are, tend to be quite important. So um, it's a big thing for me to say to people that I love them, even if I'm in the middle of a fight with them. So, uh, I mean, ask my parents or my husband, maybe that's not always true, but I do try and say I love them uh, because it's really important to me that, you know, the last words I leave people with. And Jesus's last words... Um, as he was as before his ascension, he said, uh, um, you are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Um, and then he led them out as far as Bethany, lifted his hands and blessed them. And then he left. So his last words, um, you know, apart from all the people he met before, uh, which is in the earlier part of Luke chapter 24, his last words were literally like, stay you'll be closed with power um and and basically he was trying to say like my work here is done it's over to you guys now uh which which is why i think it's really important we realize that we're like in the middle act it's not the end yet because there is work for us to be done and then the final reason why i think it's really um relevant and important um that we think about the gospel story as us being in the middle act um is because this is really important. Um, there is a risen Christ interceding for us while we finish the work he's commissioned us to do, uh, which is the work of redemption on earth. And it's incredibly important that Christ uh, was resurrected as a bodily being and then also ascended as a bodily being. Um, if he wasn't ascended into heaven, firstly, I wouldn't really kind of know where, where Christ would be completely honestly because he's like a physical being right um, I'm sure some physicists can tell me how that would work but um, because he was taken out to heaven we know that we have this person interceding for us in heaven and not only that the implications are that we have direct access to the throne room of God in heaven um, so if you cast your mind back to the Old Testament in Esther, um, Esther 4.11, she says this, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. So Esther was saying like, guys, I can't go to the king's throne room. I will literally be killed. Uh, but because Christ has died for us and then ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God's throne, we have direct access to God. We can go into the throne room at any point and have confidence that we won't be put to death or rejected, that 
God holds out his golden scepter to us so that we may live and so that we may petition him uh, because Christ has risen and ascended to sit on the right hand of God. Um, and, and in Hebrews, it talks about how wonderful and special um, this thing is. Um, Hebrews 7, 19 to 26 says, uh, for the law made nothing perfect, but on the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God, and it was not without an oath. So, sorry, I realize I start in the middle of this passage, just talking about Jesus Christ being uh, like a high priest. Um, and it continues, for those who formerly became priests were made such without an oath, but this one, Jesus, uh, was made a priest with an oath, Oath by the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he, Jesus, holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. He's gone into heaven as a being which still blows my mind but he's there continues forever consequently he's able to save to the mo ut uttermost those who draw near to god through him since he always lives to make intercession for them for it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest holy innocent unstained separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens so super exciting um that we're in the middle acts and super exciting that Jesus went to, uh, rose into heaven, ascended into heaven, because now we have not only direct access to the throne room, but we also have this high priest who intercedes for us. Um, and not only that, this is like permanent, like God himself has said, you are a priest forever. Christ isn't going anywhere. He's not going to die again. He's there forever. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in with Christ. So, so that's great. Um, and then in Revelation, you know, we're told as believers, to the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne, Revelation 3, 21. Um, which is fantastic, as in if you're a believer and if you choose to follow Jesus, this is what you're being offered, direct access to the throne room of God the Father through Christ and Christ who intercedes for us in a very real way. It honestly blows my mind that there is a bodily being in heaven and I really just can't explain how that works, but, you know, faith, etc. Um, anyway, what shall we do with this knowledge and the fact that we are still just in the middle act of the this, this three-act story? Um, here's what it says in Acts chapter 2, verses 32 to 33, and then 36 to 39. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Let all the house of Israel know, therefore know for certain, that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself, everyone. And I think this is so wonderful because... Number one, like if you know Christ, then everything I just described is described as just yours for the taking. And number two, if we go back to my previous point about how Christ's earthly work is done, but we've been commissioned to carry on his earthly work, this is available and open to, to all. Um, and we have faith in that and knowledge and certainty in that because we know that Christ has died was resurrected and has ascended into heaven at the right hand of God. Um, and so I think it's really important, number one, to kind of just revel in it. It's not something I do all the time to just revel in the fact that, um, 
that this is what we have as believers. And number two, I definitely as a reminder to myself um, that we have everything to play for. And this is something that we should be, or I definitely should be sharing more with people. So the more I revel in it, the more I want to pour it out to people and share it with people so that they can also experience Christ. Um, because it's so great that the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, and for everyone. Um, so to close, I just wanted to remind all of us, uh, myself particularly, of one of my favorite verses um, in the Bible that um, I have certainty in as true uh, because of the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Christ. And it is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair always carrying in the body the death of Christ so that the life of Jesus may not may also be manifested in our bodies so we do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Um, and we have faith that we will have be able to enjoy um, the eternal weight of glory because we have a Christ who has ascended into heaven and is coming again. And that is the exciting third act uh, that we, we are able to look forward to. Um, God bless all of you. Thank you. Josephine, thank you uh, very much, and uh, thank you for just stirring us to think um, about some of these extraordinary things of eternity, looking to the things that are seen but are eternal. Uh, Josephine said that uh, the Bible tells us we have access to the throne room. Jesus is also interceding for us. Let's uh, avail ourselves of that access uh, in prayer now. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Let's imagine uh, more than imagine, let's enter into the throne room of heaven in our prayers and to believe that Jesus himself is interceding for us and praying with us. It's an extraordinary thing to get our head around, but uh, let's intercede uh, in fellowship with Jesus in that throne room of heaven now. Almighty God, we come to you and we uh, acknowledge Jesus as the risen, ascended King one who has sat down on the throne of heaven with the work completed, the job accomplished of bringing about the salvation of sinful men and women, a way back to God, a renewed friendship, paradise restored. We come before you, Lord God, as the Bible encourages us to, to intercede for the needs of the world, we pray for those things which we hear about, which trouble us, those things which distress us. And we pray, as the Bible encourages us to, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we hold before you the disturbing news that has been on the news every day this week of the flare-up of violence between Israel and Gaza and the Palestinian territories. Lord, we bring before you this age-old dispute, this uh, cycle of violence which rears its ugly head from time to time with devastating consequences, with tragic loss of life. Father, we pray to you against escalation, pray that voices of reconciliation would be heard above the noise of retaliation. Pray for all who have a part to play in bringing peace in the Middle East, for those conversations, discussions which will have happened today between government leaders and Jewish and Palestinian leaders. Lord, we pray for mercy and we pray for better news to come this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray on for our 
community, our society, our country, and indeed the world in the light of the ongoing uh, health pandemic. Lord, there were many things which have encouraged us in recent days. The massive decrease of the number of cases and especially the loss of life. And we pray on for those responsible in this country for organizing the vaccination program and the organization of health services and the decision making about restrictions of uh, lifting of restrictions, some from tomorrow, some planned for a few weeks. Lord, we pray for real wisdom for our government leaders that they might understand the best way of administering all the things uh, which people want to do. Grant them wisdom and understanding. And on a global scale, we pray, Lord God, that there would be a greater sharing of medical resources, a greater distribution of the vaccinations. We pray for those countries which are particularly being devastated. We pray particularly for the country of India. Lord, unspeakable uh, numbers of people dying, uh, unspeakable strain on the health services that we can hardly imagine. And Lord, we just pray that you would hear the cry of those who are mourning and hear the cry of those who are suffering. Lord, we pray for your healing of individuals and of nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for our own community, the neighbourhood for which we are particularly responsible to pray and to work for the coming of your kingdom. We pray for Kennington. We pray for this area of Oval. For all who live and work here, for those who pass through, for the business centre, the schools, the underground station, the bus stops, the estates, the streets, the blocks of flats, the cricket ground, the parks, the open spaces. Pray, Lord God, for each of these uh, areas, our neighborhood. And we pray for families and individuals uh, who are living their lives here. Pray that they would be touched by the love of God through the activity of the church and that all who are followers of Jesus would be able to be good neighbors, would be able to serve their neighbors in love and practical ways. Pray on for our schools. We pray particularly for St. Mark's, giving you thanks for uh, the much improved health of our head teacher who was uh, seriously ill a month ago. Pray on for the teaching and learning in our schools uh, this week. Pray on for the Oval Cricket Ground as uh, this week we'll see them being able to open their doors to 25% capacity of the of the stadium's uh, capacity. There may be um, from Thursday onwards, uh, there's a game where spectators will be allowed in. It's a real landmark uh, for the cricket club in uh, the context of this last year or so. Pray for all who work in that cricket ground. Uh, pray for those who will take on new responsibilities with the uh, departure of the chief exec announced this week. Lord, we pray for our connections, our relationships with all of these institutions and all the different things going on, that we might be able to continue just to encourage people that we're praying for them, uh, that we are sharing Jesus with them. We thank you for the ministries which go on from this building and from the Montgomery Hall for the work of Spear. Uh, Lord, uh, for the young adults who are being prepared for the world of work. For those we come alongside uh, with debt, for the work that Cherie leads us on in partnership with Christians Against Poverty, for the work of ODAT, one day at a time, uh, coming alongside those uh, seeking freedom from addiction. Pray for the community lunch on Wednesday as we offer lunch from the steps of the church. Pray for our working with children and young people. And we pray, Lord God, for our partnership with the Lambeth GP Federation uh, in the vaccination campaign and program. Uh, 7,000 people have been uh, vaccinated this week. Yesterday saw a new daily record of 1,786 people receiving the injection. Pray that these vaccinations would be effective, that they would indeed give people protection. 
from falling sick, from being hospitalized, and particularly from loss of life. Lord, we thank you for the, the miracle, really, of science, of the medical discovery of uh, these vaccinations. And we just pray that they would continue to be seen as effective and that uh, so many people would receive them that uh, we would see an end to the suffering of people falling sick, the end of uh, the pandemic. Lord, we dare to believe that that day will come. Pray, Lord God, for opportunities for those who are volunteering and serving in the Montgomery Hall to point people to the love of God, that our actions and our words would speak of that risen, ascended victory of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of quiet, let's each one of us bring before God in that throne room of heaven our own particular prayers and intercessions for ourselves and for those we love. Let's uh, join our prayers together by joining together in the Lord's Prayer. I'll lead us in the traditional form of the Lord's Prayer, but feel free to say it in uh, any language or version that you are familiar with. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we're going to have one more song, but before we do that, let me uh, just draw your attention to the new sheet. Hopefully, well, there's still some there, Alan. We hadn't run out this morning, yeah? Great. Okay. Hopefully you picked one up. Um, if you're on my email circulation list, I also emailed them uh, about an hour or so ago. Um, just a couple of things to underline, and that is that next Sunday is Pentecost. And uh, weather permitting, uh, we hope to do our morning service outside. Um, you'll know that uh, singing is not yet permitted inside the building, but it is outside. And it'd be great to have a really good praise and worship session uh, on Pentecost. So in order to make that possible, we thought we would do what we did on Good Friday and have the service outside. Um, we'll only come inside if it's actually raining. If it's just a bit, little bit nippy and you're coming in the morning, uh, let me just encourage you to put an extra layer on. Uh, but hopefully we'll have some worship and witness outside uh, for our morning service. And then after the service, we have our annual meeting. Uh, so those who are staying for the annual meeting will invite them to come inside. And uh, we have the business of the annual meeting. We hear um, various reports. We elect church wardens and PCC members, uh, review the accounts. Um, the agenda is there. Um, I think everything else is fairly self-explanatory. Um, if there's any questions about any of that, do let me know. Um, but it's really just to warn you about next Sunday morning if you are planning to come. Uh, there'll be an e evening service again, as usual, on Pentecost Sunday evening. Let me thank Josephine for sharing. Uh, let me thank you all for being here. And for those of you uh, watching at home, great to have you joining us. We're going to have one final song, which is a song uh, that we are celebrating the work that Jesus did of redemption and looking to the promised gift of his Holy Spirit to enable us, the church, to enable his followers to continue building his kingdom and uh, doing his work. So let's enjoy uh, this song now. Thank you. We look forward to a day when we will stand in glory and see Jesus face to face. So uh, the three of us are going to sing, There is a Redeemer. Thank you. 
We do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So Lord God, let us walk this night and this week in companionship with you, in the power of your Spirit in the light of eternity. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you and upon those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.